Welcome back everyone to our Corn Streams Answers for COVID-19. Uh, we're happy to have all of you here and especially our guests who are representing various colleges and who we are gonna hear from right after our usual FCPS updates. So thank you all for joining us. Um, as always, we're on 7 p.m. Thursdays and Sundays. Last conversation was with Dr. Brabant, our school system superintendent. So highly encourage you to take a look at some of what he was sharing uh, with more to come. We have virtual graduations that are gonna be starting on June 30th uh, until July 2nd. If you are a senior or friends or family with a senior, be sure to be on the lookout. We're all gonna to try to make it a school board members to cheer you on. June 23rd uh, is the date for our Democratic and Republican primaries. If you have not cast your ballot yet, be sure to do so. Everyone is allowed to vote early or absentee this year because of the pandemic. So make sure your voice is heard. Uh, as you may have heard, our governor has uh, been putting out these different phases for when we're rolling out of quarantining or social distancing. Right now, uh, we are in phase two, uh, although there was a different staggering system for Northern Virginia. So just be mindful that we are actually in, in phase two now as of last Friday, which means 50 people are the maximum for gatherings. Of course, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be wearing our masks and wearing our gloves and really making sure we take good care because in Fairfax County, we still have a running total of 13,140 cases. We are looking at uh, 1,490 people who are hospitalized, 78 new cases today, and 436 total disease. So that doesn't mean the alarm bells are no longer there. We wanna make sure that we keep ourselves safe and healthy and protect those around us as well. Uh, FCPS uh, uh, nature sites are now open. Uh, if you are interested in visiting parks uh, or used to take your walk around our schools, that is an opportunity that you're able to do now. Uh, but be mindful that many uh, restrictions still apply, again, wearing gloves and masks, uh, and phase two guidelines still apply for things like religious services and large gatherings. If you have particular questions on businesses or more specific uh, needs that you might have related to social distancing, feel free to ask it in the live feed and we can answer you in more specific detail. For our schools, uh, the plans have not yet been finalized, though the governor has issued an order for schools to reopen in the fall. So that of course influences how we decide uh, to, to either open or not open. Uh, and we're gonna have to look into that. Staff will be presenting plans tomorrow to the school board. So if you're interested in this, be sure to take a look. As always guys, fcps.edu, our main website, when you click on school board, you'll see uh, a link that says board docs where you can see all the different attachments and presentations. The presentation for tomorrow has already been uploaded. So feel free to take a look. And then when you go to our fcps.edu slash TV, you can watch live at 1.30 during our work session, the staff explanations around that presentation. You will also have the opportunity to speak up this Thursday at 6.30 when we will have a public hearing. And it's specifically to about distance learning. So we wanna hear what your experiences have been so far, what you plan for the future and what you wanna see out of our school system, not only in the summer, but also throughout the fall. Uh, we've received your many hundreds of emails. So please, if you do have the chance and ability, uh, you'll have three minutes to be able to speak to anything you'd like on that topic. Uh, to be able to sign up, same thing, fcps.edu, just click on school board and you will see a register to speak link for distance learning uh, public hearing. We want to make sure your voice is heard. You're able to submit uh, via writing. You can submit uh, a video or you can come in live uh, in person. In addition, uh, we have a number of meetings coming up. Before that, I want to make sure I remind folks that any resources you may need related to housing, financial assistance, health care, there is a coordinated services line in our county. If you call, they'll direct you to the appropriate nonprofit organization. There have been tremendous efforts across this county uh, of, of community helping folks. Uh, that number is 703-222-0880. And, and you're interested in more details, we did a stream a few sessions back with a number of these organizations explaining what they offer. So be sure to check it out if that is of benefit to you. In addition to uh, what I mentioned regarding uh, distance learning, a couple of things to look out for with the school board. In the, the week following, we are gonna have a public hearing regarding the name change for Lee High School. Certainly overdue, but glad that it's in, it's in progress now. Uh, if you wanna have the opportunity to speak up and uh, make sure that you are one of the voices on the right side of history, 
do sign up. It's the same way of signing up for our distance learning public hearing, fcps.edu, and you will see a Lee High School name change public hearing uh, to sign up for those three minutes. You can be a student, faculty, anyone that lives in our county. After that, the school board will be finalizing that decision uh, that week uh, and will continue doing their work to make sure that that happens. Uh, June 23rd is when the vote will occur and I look forward to being one of those who supports the change. Uh, at the end of June is when the school board has planned to announce the distance learning uh, decisions. So we're gonna have multiple work sessions and meetings between now and then listening to all of you, receiving your feedback to make sure those decisions are made well. And finally, August 25th will be the first day of school as we move into next year. So mark your calendars. We will be excited to hopefully provide the safest, healthiest, uh, and most uh, conducive uh, learning environment for success. With that, I'm gonna move to uh, Ritika for a couple of protest dates that she wants to share with you all to make sure we're continuing to keep uh, our, our momentum alive as we think of a progress for our county. And finally, we're gonna have some brief uh, academics updates from Karina and open it up for our discussion. So Ritika, go ahead, please. Great, thank you so much, Abar. So as she said, we're gonna go over a couple of things that FCPS has been doing in regards to the protests and this, this movement that has come alive during this time. So first up, there is a, there's been a lot of students that have been participating in the Black Lives Matter protests. It's great to see people in my age group and um, even those above and below showing their voice and sharing that out. There was a protest at Walt Whitman Middle School last Tuesday. The superintendent, Bray Brand, says racist, racism and hate has no place in FCPS and this cannot be ignored. To our Black and African American students and staff, I want to, you to know that we see you, we believe in you, and we stand in you. And as Abrar had mentioned before, FCPS School Board and the members have resumed the process of renaming Robert E. Lee High School with a virtual community hearing, as she said, on June 22nd at 4 p.m. Make sure to check that out so that way we can work towards bettering our community and making sure that everyone gets the rights and freedoms that we deserve. And I encourage everybody to take a look. Yeah, thanks, Rithika. Um, at the school board letter that has been released on this is an official statement on uh, the school system uh, to correct the legacies of our past, um, as well as uh, an, a commitment um, that I've made uh, to work on a number of these topics in small working groups. If anyone watching this is interested, whether it's the achievement gap, the SRNR, the discipline policy, whatever it might be, uh, if you have found your new awakening to, to take some action, do be in touch, and I would love to have you join one of our working groups uh, for this cause. So Karina, go ahead, please, with some brief academic resources uh, updates before we move forward. Hi, I'm Karina. I'm part of the quarantine, quarantine stream team. Um, Kimberly actually had her wisdom teeth removal a few days ago, so I'm here substituting. Rithika and, here, and I are here substituting for her, helping her out. <laughs> Okay, so starting with the food updates, as of Friday, June 12th, FCPS distributed a total of 1,406,068 meals. And for the academics updates, FCPS and the Fairfax Department of Neighborhood and Community Services, um, short for DNCS, will be offering a five-week virtual program called the Middle School Value in Prevention for the rising seventh, eighth, and ninth grader students. Um, activities will include art, photography, STEM, 4-H, physical fitness, cooking, games, and more. Um, you can access the registration and further information through the link that I'll post on the live chat on Facebook. It's a little bit long. Yeah. And back thank to you, Abrar. Thank you so much, Karina. Uh, thank you to our students. Always a critical voice uh, and a reminder of what's exciting coming ahead in the future. Um, so with that, thank you so much to our guests. Welcome. We are so pleased to have you all uh, share useful and beneficial information for our community. I'm going to open up the floor for you guys to introduce yourselves. Awesome. Abrar, thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us. My name is Nora Ferguson. I'm here from the University of Virginia. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Shanae Cruz. I am the Senior Associate Director for Undergraduate Recruitment at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Abar, for this invitation. 
Um, I'm Benjamin Blue. I'm a senior admissions counselor uh, lo and located in Arlington, Virginia, a few miles away from where you all are. I'm Monica Pinier. I'm senior. Oh. And so impressed at everything you guys are doing. Good job. Thank you, Monica. Thanks, Sabar, and thanks for having us here. I'm Eva Brumesco. I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at George Mason University in Fairfax. Uh, you guys have heard me before. I, my name is Ritika. I'm not representing anybody as a director, but we did have George, uh, James Madison University send us some of their information. So I'll be reflecting their responses tonight. And they are from Harrison, Virgin Harrisonburg, Virginia. Thank you, Ritika, for filling in. Um, wonderful. So to get us started, um, if each of our schools can give us a bit of a profile, what kind of student applies to your university and who should be looking uh, at potentially applying to your school? I can get us started. Um, so we typically receive over 40,000 applications every year at UVA. Um, that has been what we have received in the past. Um, so anyone and everyone can apply to the university. Our um, undergraduate class is about 17,000 students. Um, and we have students coming from all over the country and all over the world um, to join us in Charlottesville. Hi again, everyone. Um, the majority of our students actually hail from Virginia. I would say about 90% of our students are in-state students. Um, every year we receive just over 19 applications for freshman admission. And for the fall 2019 semester, we enrolled 4,461 students. And a typical incoming freshman um, admitted student usually falls between a 3.35 and a 4.02 GPA, that is a weighted GPA. And the um, academic profile for test scoring, um, and we do super score, falls between a 1080 and a 1250. And um, we really only look at the critical reading and the math portions of the test. But we do also accept the ACT. Similar to uh, VCU, majority of our students um, actually hail from the state of Virginia, about 60%. Uh, with that being said, we have about 20% of our students uh, that are actually international students. And so uh, in many ways, we actually reflect um, Fairfax County. Um, so if you are the type of student and you like a close-knit uh, community, Marymount may be a good fit. Our average class size is 15. Um, we have about 2,100 undergraduate students uh, at Marymount. And, and for, for the record, we, we are actually test optional. Uh, many private universities are going this route um, if you have above a 3.0 GPA. Um, if, unfortunately, if you have below, we'll have to look at your test scores and we'll super score. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, I'll speak for William and Mary. We are about like a small mid-sized college, about 6,000 total undergraduates, about 1,500 per class. Um, we receive about 8,000 applications each year. Um, pretty selective. We've just gone test optional given the circumstances for the next three years, maybe longer, but for sure the next three years. And really, we're just looking for students. We love to get to know our students, how they would get involved, whether it's in the community or at our school. We want to see students who um, want to get involved in research um, because they have those opportunities and definitely if we just try to take students in context to kind of where they're at, what their school is like, their area, and kind of go from there. All right, so as for George Mason University, um, students that come to us are often students who are looking for a typical university experience. You know, we do have our kind of um, traditional campus in Fairfax, but we have really close access to Washington, DC. So students that want access to the city, maybe that are interested in majors that will, will 
be um, it would benefit them to be in DC or the greater DC region, which includes, you know, the Northern Virginia Technology Corridor. Um, so our location is a big reason students come to us. Uh, we're also the uh, most diverse university in Virginia. We're among the most diverse in the country. Um, so we have students from all over the United States and all over the world, although about 80% of our students are from this, the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, and our uh, middle 50th percentiles, and so you'll hear that term a lot as you're looking at schools, but that basically means that half of all of our admitted students last year for freshmen had between a 3.3 and a 3.9 GPA, um, and that's weighted out of a 4.0 scale. Um, and we also, we were among the first institutions in the country to go score optional, so we've been doing it for a long time. Um, and I think we've, we've gotten pretty good at it. So we've got um, systems in place to review students for scholarships if they don't provide us with test scores. Uh, you can be admitted to our honors college without test scores. Um, and especially now in the current circumstances where it might not be a choice of a student whether or not they have test scores available, um, we're planning to not be requiring those from students for review this coming cycle. Rizika, you want to share for Madison? I don't really have a lot to say, but okay. I mean, whatever they shared. Um, let me get that up real quick. Sorry about that. Okay, we'll come back. Um, I know that you know you guys shared a little bit about the profile of a student that you look for. Um, I'm curious. You know, a lot of students have get nervous about how their profile is going to be seen. Sometimes, you know, freshman year is a little bit rough. Um, you know, maybe there was improvement over time. We like to talk about that trend, right? So I'd love for you guys to comment on a little bit on how you make your admissions calculations, what some of the weights you put maybe are. Uh, some students may have the idea that there are these cutoffs, right? As to if you don't make a certain GPA, you're just never gonna make it to this school. I'll give each school an opportunity to comment a little bit on the calculations you guys make and whether you have formulas or not in your determinations. Um, so you, I'll speak for the UVA process. We do not have any formula in any way in our review process. Um, we take every piece of the application into consideration when we are reviewing a student's application. So we have a holistic process. Um, the transcript, I will say, is probably the most important thing for us when we're reviewing an application. Uh, with that being said, there is no average or minimum or cutoff GPA when you are applying to UVA. And one thing um, that some of my colleagues have mentioned, UVA just announced that we are also going test optional for this upcoming admission cycle. So again, there is no, we're not looking at any of that information. Um, students are welcome to submit scores if they are interested in doing that, but they are not required in our upcoming admission cycle. Um, but beyond that, we also recognize with everything going on right now with COVID-19 that um, grading, grading scales were affected by that in the way that the instructional methods were also forced to change this semester. So we will be accounting for that as well. S things that were out of a student's control, they will not be disadvantaged for in our review process. And for Virginia Commonwealth University, we conduct a holistic um, evaluation of each applicant on an individual basis. So with that being said, when an application comes across uh, or comes up for review, it isn't this student or that student, which one will we pick? Every time we review an application, the applicant is being evaluated on their own individual merits. And so that will be a combination of their high school transcript, not only their GPA, because to be honest with you, a GPA is solely a snapshot and isn't necessarily always indicative to which courses or the rigor, the academic rigor of the courses that a student has selected or even what courses are even offered at that particular student's high school. So we're actually looking at, uh, we, we delve into what is actually on the transcript. What courses the, did the student complete? Um, what courses were at the students, you know, did the student have access to complete? You know, were there honors, AP, IB, dual enrollment, everything, and everything included? Um, 
We are also test optional. We've been test, op test optional for a little while now. Um, and our test optional GPA is a 3.3. So in most instances, if a student has a cumulative GPA of 3.3 or higher, they can be, uh, they can request on their application, on their common application, that is what we use for uh, first time freshman applicants to be considered without test scores. Um, it should be said that for scholarship consideration that we do require students to uh, submit test scores. But we're also looking at, you know, the extracurricular activities of a student. We're looking at, did the student work? Did this student have uh, certain life circumstances that perhaps created additional challenge and obstacles that they had to overcome to still manage to do very well in their academics? Um, we are also very diverse. Um, we have a very high um, diversity student population at VCU, also one of the more diverse uh, campuses. Um, and then we also, we're a little bit different where we have an urban campus. So um, we're intertwined between residential as well as commercial um, spaces within the city of Richmond. And so it gives students an opportunity to have a city environment but not be in the, the biggest, scariest city in the world. So it's, you have an opportunity to get a little bit of a taste of an urban environment without being in a, a, a huge, huge city such as like a New York or Philadelphia. Uh, so one thing you all notice is that many institutions uh, have a holistic review. Uh, same thing at Marymount. Uh, it just means we're looking at the entire student. And so what, what are you bringing to the table? Um, without uh, just adding on to what has previously been said, um, I love reading letters of recommendation. I love reading essays. The application process is a chance for us to get to know you. And uh, along with that, it's also an opportunity for you to get to know Marymount as a whole as well. Uh, so I encourage families and students to visit either virtually, which we have available or in person um, take time to first visit the website, see what scholarships we offer. Uh, we are super duper transparent. It's all listed on our website for you. GPA, depending on test score, although we're optional, you can send it to us. And so um, that, that process as a whole, we want to know you as a full student. We want to know mom, we want to know dad, we want to know grandma, uh, because you're, you're not just being a part of, you're not just joining your college, you're joining your family. Excellent. Students are so lucky. In Virginia, we have so many great institutions, and I'm going to add into that <laughs> holistic. I know we probably get tired of hearing it and saying it, but I mean, but it's true, and it's great. And I love that, um, like these other great institutions, Lame and Mary, we don't look at a like a certain score for this or that. You know, sometimes just a very powerful essay will move us if you know, the student maybe didn't necessarily wasn't towards the top of their class, but we can see that there's been a lot of things, especially in this day and time that we see that, you know, we're not always on a level playing field. So um, our process, uh, every application gets reviewed by at least two different deans and then in a committee environment where we're just like, let's really try to see, you know, the background of the student, um, where they're coming from, the school that they're coming from, circumstances. Yes, definitely, we, we wanna see that they've taken advantage of you know, the most challenging or rigorous courses possible, um, you know, without stressing themselves out. You know, we want students to have a good life too, of course. Um, definitely wanna see that students have been involved in some capacity. We're definitely gonna be a little bit more lenient on that on this upcoming cycle, given the circumstance that students may not have been able to be as involved during a pandemic. Um, uh, Letters of recommendation from teachers, counselors. We love getting to know um, and we read all of them. And I would say definitely the essay. We just really like to get to know our students. We wanna know what makes them them and how they see changing the world and just how they're gonna be really active. We're a really tight knit community, tribe family. So we're just, you know, we want students the moment they come on here, like, what are we gonna do? Let's go. <laughs> 
Yeah, so Mason does a holistic application review as well. And um, I've been saying that the word of the this admission cycle is going to be context. I think that given everything that's been going on, um, the disruption, the, you know, every high school is handling, you know, your grading scale and how your approach to the distant learning distance learning differently. And so in a normal year, context is really what a holistic application review is about, right? It's, it's about us understanding where you're coming to us from, what you've been offered, what you've done with what you've been offered. Um, and at Mason, we are, we've always, you know, given that, that complete review. Um, but this year, there's going to be some additional ways for you to build that context into your common application. Um, so there's always a section on the common app, which is probably how most of you will be applying to college that says, you know, anything else we need to know in order to make sense of everything else that you've given us. Um, and that's always been a great place for you to talk about, um, you know, a, a deployment in the family or an illness that you or a loved one suffered or, um, you know, what, what, God forbid, a death in the family, anything that might be appearing in your application, but not super evident to the reader exactly what they're seeing. Uh, but this year, there's another additional spot for you to talk about anything that might have happened to you or your educational trajectory that was unexpected due to the pandemic and, you know, any surrounding circumstances. So we are building in ways for you to share more with us. Um, and then, and sharing is, is always the, the right thing to do. Lots of you are going to have counselors at your individual colleges and universities that you're applying to who are assigned to you, to the school you go to. Um, and those people are wonderful to reach out and make connections with this summer. If you know the schools you're excited about, get in touch with us, start telling us, you know, how things are going for you, start asking your questions of us now. Um, and then it be only becomes easier to ask those questions as we continue. Um, and Abar, you mentioned something also about sort of trends in your grades, you know, comparing how you started in high school to how you're finishing. Um, and that's that's another perfect thing to contextualize, right? If you had a real change in your approach, you know, after freshman year or sophomore year, or there were some sort of mitigating circumstances, all that should make it into the application somewhere or into an exchange with your counselor somewhere or into a letter or an essay. Um, you've got a few different pieces to send to us. So anything you want us to know needs to make it in there or else we don't have it. Thank you guys so much. And I know some of you commented on uh, the adjustments or the considerations you're giving due to COVID. Uh, I do wanna make sure I give the opportunity to anyone else who wants to comment on that. It is the long awaited question that we have been receiving. <laughs> do you know if colleges are gonna do this? Are APs are you know, are they gonna count APs with the exam changes? Um, you know, are, are they accepting or are we doing the SAT? Is it required? Uh, because I had planned to take it this, but now I can't because there are wait lists. All sorts of questions related to the COVID changes. I'll open up the floor. We don't necessarily have to go in order, but anyone who wants to add to what their university is doing uh, uh, to consider all of that. Uh, I'd like to go first. Um, and uh, to respond to what James Madison is doing to some of the other things, many of their, their applications in normal years, as Ms. Ava had mentioned, because of the context in normal years, they do look at your academics and extracurriculars remain extra as um, the admissions counselor said, academics does come first. But again, with this year, everything is going to be looked at in that holistic re review. They will know that because of COVID, a lot of extracurriculars have been canceled or modified. And a lot of the things that we've been doing this year in terms of grading is really different. So they'll look at it from an open perspective. The main piece of advice that James Madison would like to give some of their prospective students would be to make sure to follow the directions on the application. Don't procrastinate and wait until the deadline. Proofread for typos and be sure to show their true self in essays. While they're tr technically the transcript is the only thing they mandate, they, they have gone test optional for the past two years as some of the other schools here. So again, with these current circumstances, there's no need to send in your scores and especially it may not be many students might not be able to. You can also, if I can pull this up, you, they also, you can also turn in your extracurricular list from whatever you've done up till now, your letter of recommendation, personal statements does say a lot about you because academics have been changed. So make sure to use these sources on the essays and all the application to 
show your real show your true self and really put yourself out there for James Madison. And they know, as I said, they don't, they've gone test optional, so don't worry about the test scores. Thank you, Rithika. Yeah, I want to clarify for the public. So Rithika is one of our student volunteers. She's reading uh, some of the notes we received from James Madison University because uh, they were not able to send their representatives. So thank you. So anyone else? Uh, go ahead. I'd like to add something really quickly that I didn't think to mention before. Um, due to COVID, the COVID situation, um, and I mentioned before that we're a test optional if an applicant has a cumulative GPA of 3.3 or higher. One of the things that the Office of Admissions did uh, for the fall 2020 um, application cycle um, is that instead of a student having to self-identify as wanting to be considered test optional if they do meet the GPA requirement, we went ahead and just made a blanket test optional for anyone who already had that GPA. Um, so even if an applicant didn't say, you know, um, yes, I want to be considered test optional, we actually went back and we did an audit of everyone who applied but maybe did not have test scores. And we went ahead and just um, automatically considered them test optional because we do know that there's a, there was a window of time where someone could have possibly gotten lost in the cracks and wasn't able to go back and take the test. And we didn't want them to be penalized. And again, something that Nora mentioned, I just want to emphasize, it is not this applicant's fault what is happening here. And so if a grading scale has changed, it is the, I can't speak for all colleges and universities, but of course I can only speak for VCU. We're going to go with it. We're rolling with this. <laughs> so, you know, students should not stress over things that are beyond their control. They have absolutely no control over what the, you know, the grading scale looked like you know, due to COVID. These are decisions that were made beyond, you know, outside of their control. And so, you know, we're going, that. and we've gotten some inquiries, you know, from uh, school counselors, You're like, what are we gonna do? You know, this is something that's gonna be on all colleges and universities radar for, for the next five years, <laughs> you know? And so an, an Office of Admissions is not going to forget that COVID happened, you know? And so it's always gonna be taken into consideration when we see the uh, fall 2019, spring 2020 school year on a student's transcript, that, that uh, there was a significant national occurrence that happened. And so I just wanna alleviate any stress that a student could possibly have. This is something that's going, that we're gonna have to take into consideration for quite a while. Thank you so much, uh, Cruz. Did anyone else want to add anything? Okay. Um, so the next question, timely actually to the COVID thing, uh, a lot of people faced financial hardship during this time. Uh, it's always a question on many students' minds, now maybe even more so. So what kinds of financial aid packages do some of you offer? Are there scholarship opportunities? How do students qualify? I want to give each uh, university the opportunity to comment on that. Definitely an important question to be considering right now. Uh, so UVA is one of two public schools in the country that's committed to meeting 100% of a student's demonstrated financial need. So that means that we as an office do not offer much in terms of a scholarship just because our financial aid office is meeting 100% of that need. So students are required um, to fill out the FAFSA and the CSS profile for UVA. Um, from that, our financial aid office will determine um, a student's package, and that will be composed of grants, uh, work study, loans. Loans are capped each year. We don't want our students to graduate with a lot of debt. Um, and then there are scholarships available from other, other resources um, across the university as well, um, and from other organizations that just have privately uh, run scholarships. The VCU Office of Admissions uh, offers quite a few merit-based scholarships. Um, in order um, to be considered for a scholarship, a student just needs to make sure that they apply by our advertised scholarship deadline, which is currently uh, November 15th. Um, 
if that has changed, the student, you know, students should basically always just, you know, check into our, our web page just to make sure that there aren't any changes. Um, usually these types of changes, if it will occur, um, will happen during the summer in between the two different um, admission years. And our scholarships range from, you know, the presidential, which is, you know, in-state tuition fees, room and board, and then we have a provost scholarship, a dean scholarship, as well as some smaller awards that we offer. And I'm just going to uh, share my screen really quickly to show the audience where they can find more information as well as profiles for these scholarships. And so this is the Office of Admissions uh, webpage, which is just admissions um, or vcu.edu slash admissions. And if you go to paying for college and then you click on scholarships, it'll show you all the different types of criteria and that, as well as the types of scholarships. And if you click on the plus sign, it will give you a profile of uh, all of the awardees for the last uh, school year. So I think that it's important that students have a general idea of the competitive nature of some of these scholarships. Um, in addition to that, we recommend that all students submit a FAFSA, even if they feel as if they may not qualify, there is no harm in submitting a FAFSA. You don't know what you're going to be offered until you actually apply. And right now, the FAFSA uh, deadline is, I believe, March 1st. And so this is just a list of all the different scholarships. We do generally offer, depending on available funding, some smaller awards as well, but these are our larger scholarships. And again, uh, freshman applicants can find that by going to the admissions webpage and then clicking on applying for college and then scholarships. I'll add for Will. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Ben. Sorry. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, I just want to piggyback on the FAFSA free application for federal student aid. Um, I encourage every family to apply for that. Um, even if you know you don't plan on receiving it, um, you never know um, what the benefit of that could be. Um, for any families that are uh, currently struggling financially um, due to COVID-19, uh, one thing to know when it comes to that free application for federal student aid, it's going to ask for your 2019 tax information, uh, but you also want to share this year's information because um, that's going to that's gonna be most important to keep us updated. Um, outside of that, uh, also, I'm going to share my screen uh, with everyone. I spoke about our scholarships being transparent and open um, with everyone, and I actually want to share with um, you all the scholarships that are available to our incoming first year students. Um, so by visiting our admissions website and clicking on financial aid, um, you'll see that any student with above a 3.8 weighted GPA will automatically receive a $17,500 a year scholarship. Um, for many students, um, especially in, in your area, uh, they tend to stay, uh, they tend to stay at home or not on campus, but you can also have the option to stay on campus. So it's just a matter of choice. Um, when it comes down to cost, um, these scholarships actually make staying not on campus your first year. Very, very, very affordable. Um, and so when we go down, um, you also see we offer many other scholarships. The reason why there are so many scholarships offered is because we're a private university. Um, typically, public universities offer more aid. Private universities offer more scholarships. And so um, if you apply before November 15th, you actually receive a $1,000-year scholarship. Um, if you go to a Catholic high school or religious school, um, if you apply for an honors program, um, that's available for students as well. And so these are many um, programs that we offer students. Um, one thing briefly I want to touch on is we're one of the few schools um, in this area that actually offers a dream scholarship. And if you are an undocumented or DACA student, um, this may be an option for you. We had 20 students apply to this uh, scholarship this year. All 20 of them received it. And it pretty much covers their tuition fees. Awesome. Uh, William and Mary, what, like EVA, we offer um, 
covering 100% of demonstrated need for in-state students. Um, so definitely recommend all of our students completing their FAFSA. We also want students to complete the CSS profile. Um, we also give automatic merit aid scholarships and we do that through the admissions process. There's not a separate application, just as admission deans, as, as I said earlier, like we have multiple people looking at your application. So, you know, a few of us are like, wow, this was, you know, pretty impressive everything that they've done or look what they want to do. Um, we're able to just kind of auto award with your acceptance um, merit-based scholarships. Um, and for financial aid, some tips I've learned from working with some students right now whose financial situations have changed, you know, from their parents if they've lost a job during COVID is to always know that whatever aid package that you get, you can always reach back out to your financial aid office of the school that you plan on attending and saying, hey, there's a special circumstance, you know, is there any way I can appeal or just give you some additional information that wasn't captured by my FAFSA or my CSS profile. Um, and just know that, you know, you can be proactive with that. And certainly that's part of that holistic process is, you know, we all, whether it's admissions or financial aid, will absolutely take that into account. Yeah, so at Mason, um, for our incoming students, all um, scholarship awarding is done through the admissions office. And so that would be the money that you may be awarded based on your academic performance, those things we may call merit awards. Um, though you're all very meritous of awards. Um, so at Mason, uh, all students who are uh, apply by our early action deadline, which is November 1st, um, will be reviewed for merit scholarships and students who receive a scholarship will be notified as they are admitted to the university. Um, what you should also do is submit a FAFSA to be reviewed for need-based aid. So that's, you know, aid um, that may include uh, grants from the state, from the federal government, uh, federal loans, things like that, that is, uh, that are distributed based on your family's financial information. Um, so, that is, that's the recommended process at Mason. We are a public institution, so our scholarships are uh, fairly competitive, um, but the, we do strive to meet, you know, as much of our students' demonstrated need as we are able to. Mason is also one of the um, dream.us schools. Um, and as well, we have um, an assigned person in our admissions office to work with um, documented students, undocumented students, streamers, you know, we have a, a person that they can speak directly to and ask questions because this can be a really stressful process. Um, and we also have um, specialists who work on determining um, domicile. So that's, you know, you, whether you are an in-state student, you know, receiving in-state tuition or a uh, student receiving out-of-state tuition. And so if there are questions about the domicile approval process and how you are qualified as an in-state student, we're happy to work with students on that process as well. Um, and something else that a lot of um, eventual Mason students tend to do if, um, you know, you're being um, especially uh, finance conscious is to potentially take advantage of one of the best community college systems in the country, uh, which is Nova, and then transfer into Mason after a couple of years after receiving an associate's degree. Mason has a lot of partnership programs with Nova um, and any Virginia community college system, um, but specifically um, with Nova, we have a program called Advance which basically lets you let us know on your way into Nova that you plan to finish at Mason. And so it lets us get our hooks in you a little bit earlier, helps you get a, uh, started on your Mason coursework a little bit earlier and still see those savings um, of, of spending the first, you know, four semesters or so at uh, one of the Virginia community colleges. Thank you guys. Ben and Ava, you beat me to this a little bit. One of our audience questions actually was related to some of what you mentioned. So I'm gonna have Karina Go ahead and read it for us, uh, and then I'll elaborate on it to frame a question. Go ahead, Karina. Oh, okay. So, Mr. Manuel Gomez asks on the live Facebook chat, um, I have taught many students that are undocumented. What is the process for undocumented students when applying for college? Are there any resources for them? Um, how about financial aid? And he said, thank you for your wonderful information. So you guys covered financial aid. Uh, speaking specifically to our undocumented students, I'd love to hear folks comment a little bit. I know y'all mentioned the Dreamers Scholarship, but additional ways of support, 
And, and to broaden that as well for the commitment to diversity. A lot of students are concerned that they're, as we move up into the echelons of society, right, and go to higher education, go to college, uh, it becomes more difficult for students who may be of a minority background to, to not know what to expect or to, whether they know what they're going to find a supportive community or not, or a community that's going to understand them or where they're coming from. So I'd love for each of you guys to, to directly address how your university shows a commitment to diversity um, and particularly comment on the undocumented student supports piece as well. Sure, I can, I can get us started. Um, so in terms of diversity, UVA was founded over 200 years ago by Thomas Jefferson, and that is a long and complicated history that we are continuously um, reflecting on and working on how we, how we approach that narrative and how we approach that history moving forward. Our student body plays a huge role in how we shape our conversations about our history um, and how we how we discuss that moving forward. Uh, we practice student self-governance at UVA, which allows our students to play that large role um, in that. We've also just recently redone um, a lot of our centers um, that promote our diversity at UVA. Um, so those are wonderful resources for students um, coming from diverse backgrounds to, to take advantage of. Um, so. At VCU, we're actually right around 59% minority student population. Um, and I know that that's really different in comparison to many universities. Um, we, diversity may as well, it may as well be the diverse university, Virginia Commonwealth University, uh, <laughs> because, you know, that's what we like to tout so often. Um, in regards to admissions, we have, um, our admissions office basically has three branches of the tree. We have undergraduate admissions, we have graduate admissions, and then we have international admissions. And so for any applicant applying to an undergraduate program, um, if you are not a US citizen, a permanent resident, or you have official asylee status, then you would be applying through the, the Office of Interna well, International Admissions. And I wanna um, assure that all students regardless of their status should feel safe going through this process and they should feel um, comfort in knowing. Like, it, just please go ahead and apply. If, if you're interested, apply. If you're interested in asking a question, then contact our office. Um, it is a safe space. Um, once students um, transition to campus, we have a very active um, Office of Multicultural Student Affairs on campus to ensure that students from different backgrounds and traditionally underrepresented areas um, have a voice on campus. Um, we actually have over 500 student organizations on campus and many of those um, have been created to celebrate diversity and the backgrounds of our students and the special interests of our students. And so, you know, coming to an institution like VCU, um, it isn't just about finding people who look like you, but learning more and embracing the differences that we all have. Um, because diversity um, breeds growth. And it's really important that, you know, I don't really like the word tolerance because that makes me think you're having to tolerate someone's differences. And the truth is, is that, you know, Differences are what make you unique and it makes you who you is part of who you are. And so, you know, we're a, uh, an institution that really embraces, you know, all of the unique things that make up each individual applicant. And so, again, um, you know, I unfortunately, I'm not uh, the resident expert on financial aid or um, undocumented students. So I apologize for not being able to go into great detail, but I really do hope that students feel comfortable and safe in contacting our office in order to find um, and to gain more information and knowledge about the process. And we welcome that. Uh, so for students who are undocumented or international students, um, just know we do have an entire admissions team um, de dedicated to getting to know you, um, working with you, um, knowing your situation. Um, so 
Uh, and I'm also learning it myself. So it's not just international admissions counselors, this is the entire admission staff as a whole. Um, outside of that, the way the process will work for you, um, the application is pretty much the same application. Um, they'll ask the question of citizenship. And at that point, um, feel, feel free to include anything on that question um, that, that you desire. Um, it's all confidential, it's all safe. Um, one thing we are doing uh, just in terms of diversity um, as an institution, well, two, two things we're doing in terms of diversity as an institution. Um, the first thing we're doing is we're having the conversations that um, I can tell by the school board meetings in the first 10 minutes um, that, you, that you all have been having, we're having that exact same conversation um, amongst students and amongst staff and faculty. All right, so we're, at, we're asking those, how, how, how can we support um, our African-American students, our students of color? How can we better support our students as a whole? Because um, they're also tackling a COVID crisis as well. And so um, mental health is something uh, we've been big on as well for our student population. Um, so to, uh, taken as a whole, um, diversity involves race, it involves geographical diversity. So we're not just recruiting students from Virginia. We're not just recruiting students from uh, su suburban Virginia. We're recruiting students from rural Virginia. Um, about 10, 20% of our student population is international. About 10% of our student population is Muslim. Um, only 28% of our students are Catholic and we're a Catholic university. Um, so we are, we are going out of our way um, to, to bring different ideas and perspectives to the campus because we think that makes us a better institution. Great, uh, I'll answer for William and Mary. Right now what we're doing, um, well, let me go back. So what they've done in the past, uh, we're the second oldest institution in the nation and surely in the beginning, there's some things in our history that we're certainly not proud of and we've started the Lemon Project and trying to do whatever we can to make more equitable practices and just kind of recognizing these things moving forward and our student, faculty and staff and when it comes to admission, um, again, just trying to level the playing field and not even equality, but more equity and seeing who can we bring on, whether, um, you know, different things of diversity here where, um, you know, are we equally looking at people all over Virginia, all over the country? Um, you know, one third of our students are either international or out of state. Um, different ethnic backgrounds, religious diversity, LGBTQ, you know, we're looking for that kind of thing to make sure that, you know, our student body in itself is just a very diverse, you know, learning experience for us all. Um, we have almost 450 student-led clubs and organizations that speak to these to make sure that um, students feel at home, that they feel welcome, that they feel like they're part of the tribe family. Um, that they have a voice that, you know, if they see something or hear something that, you know, we can address it right away. And, um, you know, so that they know that we have their backs. We don't have any tolerance for, you know, the things going on and, and we 100% want to support them upping our counseling efforts, our, you know, diversity inclusion offices, just going out there and, and just making sure that, you know, you matter. So Mason, like we were hearing about VCU is also not a primarily white institution. So that means that our, you know, um, non-white students comprise a, a greater percentage of our university than do our white students. And so um, what that means is that if you are a first generation student, if you um, are, you know, a black student, a student of color, if you are, um, you know, new to the country, if you are um, but basically, you will find other students that are coming from that same background, right? We have enough of that diversity where you will not have to feel in a distinct minority um, if you want to find other students whose, you know, backgrounds align with yours and whose ex lived experiences um, you share. And that's really important. And I talk to a lot of students who choose to come to Mason because they you know, are really excited for everything that we're offering. And rather than blazing that particular trail as one of only a handful of students on campus with that background, they want to be somewhere where they're, you know, um, 
in, in a bigger group in that way. Um, so at Mason, you know, we have that diversity, but when we think about diversity, we're also thinking about inclusion, right? So just because we have these, you know, groups of students who, who share different backgrounds and are able to build community with one another, what are those communities look like in, in communication with one another, right? Is it a lot of, you know, individual groups that seem to be rather diverse or or are those students, you know, talking and intermingling and friends with one another and sharing their experiences with one another? Um, and so at Mason, I think that we, I think that moving towards that is is a an ongoing project at probably every institution, every university or college in the country. But I think at Mason, we are very concertedly moving towards that. Right? We've we've assembled a very interesting and diverse group of people, and so now how are how are we all interacting and be, and finding that inclusion on top of the diversity? Yeah, thank you guys so much. It's certainly a critical topic and Ben's point, one that we think of from K through 12. And, uh, you know, you guys are thinking, of course, above that. So um, would, I, mindful of time to be respectful of all of you guys for joining us. Um, I'll ask a, a final question. I know as our students kind of are thinking of the coming year, maybe spending some time over the summer planning their applications out if they're, you know, thinking that far in advance. Um, what would be your advice to students, you know, whether it's in writing essays, whether it's in soliciting teacher recommendations, uh, putting their application together. Uh, I would love for you guys to, to comment on that. And if you want, you can give your final shout out uh, to, about your university uh, to our audience. So whoever wants to jump in. I can I can kick us off. Um, I think the biggest thing and I think something that we've all uh, tried to say is to be yourself in this upcoming, I mean, in any review cycle, but especially right now. Um, again, we recognize that the things are changing right now. There are a lot of things out of students control. So please do not put extra pressure on yourself that you don't need to have um, due to things beyond your control. Uh, in terms of I'll hit on one thing with the recommendation letters. Be sure to ask your teachers in advance. Um, they get a lot of those requests and also be sure to thank them afterwards um, because those are, you're always going to get a positive letter. Um, they're going to write well about you. So just be sure um, that you do on your end um, what you need to do. And then the other thing with essays too, um, I always have three pieces of advice for those when I'm talking to students. Um, there is no perfect answer. There's no right answer to any of the essay topics. Um, so please, again, be yourself, share what you're comfortable sharing with us. Um, also, feel free to throw out that five paragraph essay model. That's always a big thing. Do not feel like you have to be held to that. Um, that might be the way you have to write a paper for English class. And while we do want those to be well written and edited, um, just be sure that you're being yourself in those in those essays. Um, and I would, you know, uh, I'll piggyback off of some of the things that Nora said. Um, be mindful of whom you're asking to write your re recommendations. Um, start at the beginning of the school year, develop relationships with those individuals so that they can give you a little bit more than a standard letter. Something that, um, some uh, um, a recommendation where they can truly speak on you your performance, your, your personality, and what you brought to whichever environment that, uh, that writer um, knows you from. Um, I would also say in your essay, use that essay to tell us about yourself. Do not try to use that essay as a selling point for the university. There's no need to tell that college university why it's great. They already know. You know, women Mary already knows, you know, George Mason, UVA, um, Marymont, you know, they all already know that they're great. <laughs> so, you know, use it, use that opportunity wisely. And then also I would uh, say, if at any point during your high school career, something happened, and there's a there's a there's a scar on your academic transcript anywhere. Address it in your essay. Generally, that is the only place or opportunity will you, where you will get uh, a chance to to discuss that. Not that the entire essay needs to be about that, 
But sometimes when we're reading an application and then we get to the transcript and everything looks good and then there's one semester or one year where something just it was off and you're curious, like, well, what happened? And so usually we'll automatically go back to the essay to see if there was anything or anywhere where it was addressed. And um, when it is, that lets us know that that was just a blip in time and not a trend necessarily. And it had just, you know, explain, you know, what happened. Tell us about yourself. Explain, you know what, that's not usually me. I went through some things and now I'm over, I'm working to overcome it. So definitely um, make the best use of your essay as you possibly can. Uh, so I have two bits of advice for you all. Uh, the first one is, uh, you, you, it's okay to have a binder with a list of all the, de the deadlines. Uh, you're applying to many schools. There are many uh, application scholarship deadlines. Uh, it is not old school uh, to do that. It is perfectly fine. Uh, and that's what got me through my senior year uh, 10 years ago. And that's my advice to every single student, high, incoming high school senior that I speak with. Um, my second piece of advice is um, enjoy your senior year. Uh, it only comes around once. Uh, take time uh, to enjoy those small moments. Uh, you will not regret it um, and you'll enjoy it more because you put in the work in the beginning and completed your personal essay and you know when deadlines are due, it's, it's gonna make it sweet. I would say advice for the coming year and students who are about to apply, if you can, especially this is Northern Virginia, if you haven't already, obviously college campuses are closed right now, but once we start to reopen to the public, um, I can't underestimate enough or emphasize enough the power of the energy of a campus if you can go visit. Um, I recognize fully William and Mary is not for everyone and that's okay. We have so many fabulous institutions in Virginia and um, my background is actually with the community college system in Virginia and I've just seen how much, you know, students perceptions can change. You know, you can kind of read all day about a school or hear about it, but until you go and visit and feel the energy on the campus, see the students, you know, kind of see the campus culture um, that can really kind of help kind of narrow in maybe the schools that are the best fit for you. Um, but that said, I'll also add that with that essay piece, agree with so many of my colleagues that we just want to get to know you, um, how this has affected you, whether it's the pandemic, all the recent things going on, um, you know, what are the things that you've done? Certainly, if there's anything on your transcripts that are, you know, we could make a story about, make sure, we just want to hear the truth. We, we see students who self-disclose disciplinary issues all the time and, and they always preface, I know this will probably make me ineligible. Not at all. You told the truth about it. That's all I want to know, <laughs> you know, so, and, and we applaud students for that. We know that's not easy, but, you know, we were young too and definitely not perfect. So, I mean, it's, it's life. So be honest, be genuine, be you. We love fierce, you know, world changers. So bring it on and go visit as many campuses as you possibly can. <laughs> and even adults don't always take accountability, right? Oh, so oh 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ava, go ahead. Um, so definitely agree with this, with the idea of visiting um, right now. Uh, lots of places are closed. And, you know, this is a pretty good opportunity while you're bored in the house. Um, to take advantage of some of our uh, virtual offerings. So most universities, most colleges and universities, we are not taking the summer off. So somewhere on our online presence, there is information for all of you where you can do what you come to campus to do through the computer. Uh, it'll be, feel a little bit different. You know, the, the vibes check is a little bit harder to perform through a, through a laptop, but at this stage where it is important for you to be firming up that list of places that you want to apply because I'm going to hit you with a timeline really fast. Common app information with supplements and essay prompts that becomes available to you August 1st. So you probably want to have a pretty good idea of where you want to apply by then. So for the next two months, 
peruse the websites, the virtual offerings. Um, lots of us may be offering virtual events for you to come and hear from us live right in your pajamas from your living room. Um, so take advantage of those opportunities. Try to get that big essay done this summer before it starts to compete with your homework, um, what, whatever that is going to look like in the fall. Um, you know, do try to be nice to future you and get a little bit of a jump on some of this stuff. And then, you know, in the spring or whenever it becomes feasible to get your feet on the ground, hugely important. Um, and I think that my, my final shout out is to just everybody be nice to each other students to parents, everybody basically knows what they're doing and also has no idea what they're doing. So just being patient with one another, um, remembering that this is kind of your last year together. So don't let this whole thing take it over and, you know, make you angry for the whole time. Um, just trust one another. Everybody wants the same outcome. Um, and the good news is everybody makes it out alive. I promise. Thank you so much to all of you. Um, you know, uh, Ben, your point on the binders, um, you know, making sure you're organizing yourselves. If it's not a binder, maybe an Excel sheet, whatever way to keep track of, uh, that's what I use, but to keep track of your deadlines. Um, and, and we will be doing, for those students who are watching, parents who have students who are thinking about this, uh, we, can, we are gonna plan a more private uh, 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 advisory session for students on just how to select you don't have to apply to 15 schools. It's expensive. Narrow it down, really be focused on what you want to do to spend that energy and this time right now wisely in anticipation of what you your, we want your future to look like. So with that, thank you so much to all our guests. Really appreciate it. As always, guys, 7 p.m. Thursdays and Sundays. Uh, we will see you next time.